Hi, this is Lara at Elliott Wave Stock Market with your daily analysis for the S&P 500 for the trading session dated Monday 21st of November. I'm recording this video quarter to six in the early evening New York time on Monday the 21st New York time. Here's our main wave count on a daily chart for the S&P. It follows on from our historic main wave count which sees a primary third wave beginning here. Primary three has to subdivide at black or intermediate degree into a five wave impulse. We have one and two complete, and this is where wave three black has started. We're still in the very early stages. Wave three black has to subdivide at blue or minor degree into a simple five wave impulse, and we still don't have the end of blue wave one yet. Within blue one, we have pink one and two, and wave three pink may possibly be over, or it may be just wave one of wave three. There are several different interpretations for this downwards movement, and I have two hourly wave counts for you today. What's most likely is it's not quite complete and we're going to see a little bit more downwards movement. I'm basing that assumption mostly on the wave length so far. It's only just a little bit longer than wave 1 pink and we really would expect to be for it to be more likely to be 1.618 the length of 1 pink. When wave 3 pink's over we'll move the invalidation point up here down to here the low of wave 1 pink and we'll expect a following fourth wave correction to not move back into wave 1 pink price territory. A midterm target for wave 3 black is still weeks away. It will reach 1.618 the length of 1 black at 905.7 and our long term target for primary 3 to finally end is still months away. Taking you now to the first of our two hourly wave counts where the high for 2 pink up here is this point up here. So this is where wave 3 pink starts. We have an impulse for 1, zigzag for 2, nice impulse complete for 3 which has a Fibonacci ratio to wave 1. So we may not expect to see a Fibonacci ratio between the 5th wave at green degree and either 3 or 1. Within an actionary wave, waves 1, 3 and 5, we usually see a Fibonacci ratio between two of them, sometimes between all three, but not often. Within wave 5 green we have 1, 2 and 3 has no Fibonacci ratio to wave 1 orange, so I will be expecting for it to be pretty likely that we are going to see a Fibonacci ratio between wave 5 orange and either 3 or 1. At 1174, wave 5 orange will reach 0.618, the length of wave 3 orange. So we should favour the upper edge of this target zone if we're going to see more downwards movement tomorrow. At 1169, wave 5 green in its entirety will reach equality in length with wave 3 green. So I'm not really expecting to see that Fibonacci ratio, which is why we favour the upper edge of this target zone. However, when we use Elliott's channeling techniques, and I've used the second technique here to draw a trend line, or sorry, a trend channel around this most recent downwards movement. Here it's drawn from 2 to 4 with a copy on 3. It shows us quite nicely where downwards movement ended for Monday's session, or the low that Monday's session found. So that's an indication that this 5 wave impulse down may actually have been over here. If we see any further upwards movement tomorrow, if for this main wave count, 4 orange can't move into wave 1 orange price territory, it's invalidated with movement above 1211.36. If price moves above this invalidation point tomorrow, then we'll use the alternate hourly wave count. If it starts to move lower, particularly if it makes a new low below the end of 3 orange down here, then we'll use this target and favour the upper end of the target zone. Taking you now to the alternate where it's all the same to this point here, and thereafter I've moved the degree of labelling here all up one degree. I've also looked at this piece of movement a little bit differently. It is possible that we did have a triangle complete here, but the E wave is very, very short. The subdivision of the B wave looks most like a five wave impulse, than, more than it does a zigzag. It's a little bit ambiguous and it's possible to see it either way. The other problem with triangles is four of the five subwaves must subdivide into zigzags, or zigzag combinations. So one of the five subwaves can be an impulse. It's pretty unusual to see an impulse in a B wave position though, even, even within a triangle. Also, this downwards trend channel drawn here using Elliott's first technique from 1 to 3 and a copy on 2 has a small overshoot for the final fifth wave. Again, the downwards channel is indicating to us that for the moment downwards movement may be over. So whether or not we see a triangle here and the fourth wave ended here, or it could still have ended here, we may have the end of a five wave impulse complete down here. For this alternate early wave count, I've labelled this wave one green within wave three pink, although this could also be the end of wave three pink. However, it would be 
pretty short in comparison to wave 1 pink, and the subsequent fourth wave really doesn't have a lot of room for upwards movement. If we see movement above 1211.36 tomorrow, then we would expect that this is another second wave correction and we still haven't seen the strongest downwards movement within this first wave down at minor degree within wave 3 black. If this is the case and movement moves, price moves above this confirmation point tomorrow, our main hourly wave count is invalidated and so this alternate is confirmed. At that stage the invalidation point must move up to here. Wave 2 green can't move beyond the start of wave 1 above 1266.36. And when the second wave is over, we'd expect further stronger downwards movement. I have two targets for the end to wave 3 pink. The first target at 1145 is where it will reach 1.618 the length of wave 1 pink. The second target at 1069 is where it will reach 2.618 the length of wave 1 pink. As we approach the first target, we'll see if the structure looks complete. If it does, we'll expect a fourth wave correction. If it doesn't look complete, we'll use the second downwards target and expect further downwards movement. This is still our alternate daily wave count and it's still looking increasingly unlikely. If wave 2 black is actually not over and continuing further sideways and higher as a double zigzag structure, now wave Y blue is enormously out of proportion to wave W blue which significantly decreases the probability of this wave count. It does still remain just technically possible. Within the zigzag for wave Y blue we can now see an A, B, C zigzag complete for wave B pink and so for this alternate daily wave count we'd now be expecting wave C upwards to be extremely likely to make a new high above the end of A and at 1322 it will reach 0.618 the length of A. Any further downwards extension of wave C green to complete wave B pink means wave B pink can't move beyond the start of wave A for a zigzag so what this alternate daily wave count is telling us mostly is that eventually when we see price move below 1074.77 we can have a lot of confidence that the second wave at black degree was over here and that we're in a third wave downwards. Two can't move beyond the start of one, so any movement above this price point and validating our main daily wave count would be then using this alternate and the invalidation point would move up to here at 1359.44. The structure to the downside may be complete or the fifth wave may still be incomplete and require one final downwards push to complete it. The trend channel is indicating to us that it probably is complete, but the structure on the 5 minute chart tells me it's most likely we're going to see one final downwards push before it is complete, and that trend channel could very well have a nice overshoot. Also, MACD favours our main hourly wave count. MACD's made a new low with Monday's low, suggesting that the downwards movement is not quite over. However, looking for divergence, we don't always see it. That's all for me today with your S&P analysis and I hope that you all had a most awesome weekend.